Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode on Writing Data Pipelines with Kedro. This is Data Engineer 1 and if you're new to the channel, we're here helping data scientists, data engineers, and data enthusiasts to write better data pipelines. In this series, Writing Data Pipelines with Kedro, we write better data pipelines using Kedro. All right. Uh, in today's episode, we're going to be covering environments. Uh, so environments are a very important concept, actually in computer science in general, where it helps dictate how to run your software, right? So for better or for worse, every time you have a piece of software, it exists in a particular environment. <clears throat> this can be your local computer, this can be a cloud environment, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. The trick is that with each of these different environments, it requires a different set of configurations. For example, if you're on your local machine, you might have locally accessible data. But if you're on a cloud machine, you're going to probably have a completely different file path in order to access that data. Uh, so how do you deal with the situation? Well, environment settings are the answer. And so Kedro actually comes with its own environmental settings capability built right in. And I'm going to show you how to use that today. Okay. So in this pipeline, what we have here is a very simple Iris data set. This is, again, the example pipeline that comes with Kedro. Whenever you just create Kedro, you can just use um, the Y button at the very end for the last option when it asks you to generate a brand new pipeline. Uh, and so that pipeline comes with some data um, right here, for example, the Iris data set. Uh, and it also has its own nodes and et cetera. Etc. <clears throat> it also comes with these, these parameters. And so if you move inside of this configuration base, uh, here's a set of parameters that Kedro usually comes with. It ships with a catalog, credentials, logging, and a parameters.yaml. Um, we've already talked a little bit about most of these guys, uh, but just to recap, I'll just say these again. The catalog is where you keep your data sets. The credentials is where you keep secrets. Logging is where you modify your logging. There'll probably be another video on logging in more detail later. And parameters is where you keep the parameters where, for your data sets and for your nodes. Um, and so here, for example, inside of catalog, we have built in a file path that points directly to our Iris CSV. So in our example, well, what if we have a situation where we need to move our Kedro pipeline and it also moves this data set location. Well, in the naive case, in the normal case, what you could potentially do is just modify this path right here and just say like data and then new location with the iris CSV, assuming that that's the new location somewhere. Uh, the problem here is that if you try to run this code on your local machine, you're gonna run into an error. And I'll show you right now. If we write that catalog and then try to do a Kedro run, we're going to run into an error. And that error is that this file for this data set is missing. Why is it missing? Because Kedro is using this catalog for this location for this data set. But because this data set doesn't exist on our local machine, it's going to throw an error. So what do you do? Are you going to just keep changing this file back and forth every time you want to stay on your local machine or every time you want to deploy? No, 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 no. That's definitely not what we want to do because that takes a lot of time, effort, and it's very easy to make mistakes. So how do you do this? We use the dash dash environment uh, parameter in the Ketro class. So let me show you how that works. <clears throat> so let's assume we have this data set right here inside of catalog gamble. The environmental config actually um, specifies uh, and, and dictates for Kedro where is it supposed to look for your configuration files. By default, Kedro looks inside of the base and local directories inside of your slash config folder. Um, <clears throat> this makes it easy for you to, to change your local parameters and then everyone can um, use the base parameters. The priority is that it starts with the base and it takes all the variables from base and then if there's something inside of local, then it takes stuff from local too. Um, however, uh, if you want to make it such that you have another set of configuration, all you have to do is you just create a new folder inside of the configuration folder here. So let's just make a new folder and let's just have this be example environment. Uh, so the name can be arbitrary. You can choose whatever name you want. I could have easily used prod or dev or staging inside of here. 
but I'm going to use example environment just to show that you can use any, any words or any uh, values that you wish. Inside of this example environment folder, of course it's empty, what you want to do is you want to copy whatever configuration that you want to modify and you want to put it inside of this folder. So say for example, in our case, what if in our example environment we have a completely different location for our iris data set. So let's go ahead and copy the catalog to this location and then we're going to modify the catalog. We're going to update the catalog with the new location of that data set. Right? So now we have a catalog entry that has the new location. However, when we run Ketro with no environment option, we're actually going to run the original catalog, the base catalog, which means the pipeline works. In order to use our new environment, we have to use dash dash m and then we type in the name, and this is example environment. And what's going to happen is it's going to read the catalog entry from the new environment and show us that it doesn't exist. Of course, we can make it exist if we just make a new directory here with data, location, and then we're just going to copy, um, oh, so we go inside of here in this new location. And I think what happened is they created the folder because it was looking for it, and of course it doesn't exist. So now we're going to copy the iris data set inside of here, inside of the new location folder, um, as well as run this pipeline with the example environment. And remember, because we modify the example environment configuration, it's going to use this file path, not the previous one, this file path, in order to look for our Kedro data set. So when we run it here, we're going to pipe it into less, and we should be able to catch that log entry that shows our file path. So scrolling down a little bit here, we see uh, CSV example iris. Oh, it seems like the file path wasn't uh, properly showing here, but at the very least, it does say very clearly here, config from path users, Tamu code environment, config example environment will override the existing top level configuration keys, the example iris data set, meaning that our new Example environment is overriding our base environment. And so as you can see, you can extend this example to whatever you need. It can be prod, dev, staging, cloud, your friend's laptop, whatever you need in order to change your environments. This is also a very useful trick if you want to quickly flip between parameters. So say, for example, I have inside of here, uh, inside of our example environment, we can actually take the parameters YAML and then put it right here. And so say, say if you're trying to experiment very quickly or if you want to just like use some kind of like new parameter settings, you want to keep some old parameter settings, you can actually create separate environments to dictate those parameters. So in this case, for example, we have our example test data ratio. And this is uh, the parameter that dictates how much we're splitting between the data, right? We can actually change this to like another value. Uh, we can increase or decrease the number of iterations. Let's go ahead and decrease. Uh, and then we have this learning rate where we can modify this too. Um, so as you can see, you can just change this example file. You can rerun Kedro, and then it'll use those new parameters in order to do its work. Oh, I apologize. So that's not Kedro run. That should have been Kedro, um, Kedro run with example environment. And so this then picks up the new parameters. Okay. So I hope you guys learned something today. Thank you very much for joining me. Um, and remember, if you enjoy this content, button that like, sub that scribe, and ring that ding if you want to know when we are pipelining. Okay, take care now. Bye-bye.